The story goes that there was a scholar surnamed Lee in Keojo Prefecture, who came from a wealthy family but lived in a not-so-spacious residence. Behind his house, there was a few acres of neglected garden. One day, an old man came to rent his house, offering 100 tails of silver as rent. Li Sheng declined the offer, citing a lack of extra space. The old man said to Li Sheng, Please rest assured and accept the rent, don't worry about it. Li Sheng didn't understand his intention, but temporarily accepted the rent to see what would happen. A day later, villagers noticed that a procession of carriages and people had entered Li's house, as if there were many people there. People began to wonder how Li's relatively small house could accommodate so many. Some came to ask Li Sheng, who knew nothing about the matter. He went home to check but found no signs of anything unusual. A few days later, the old man who had rented the house suddenly visited Li Sheng. He said, I've been living here for several days. I've had to rearrange everything, cook, and make beds. I haven't had a chance to come and pay my respects to the host. Today, my daughter prepared a simple meal. Please honor us with your presence. Li Sheng followed the old man to the feast. Upon entering the garden behind his house, Li Sheng saw a magnificent mansion, all newly built. The main hall was beautifully furnished. Wine cauldrons were simmering in the hallway, and the smoke from a tea stove wafted from the kitchen. After a brief sit-down, a sumptuous meal was served, consisting of various delicacies. Young people were coming and going at the door, and the sounds of laughter and conversations echoed constantly. Servants and maids seemed to number over a hundred. Li Sheng already understood that the family were foxes. After finishing the meal, Li Sheng returned to his own room, plotting a sinister plan. Every time he went to the market, he bought sulfur and saltpeter, accumulating hundreds of kilograms, and secretly spread them around the garden. Once everything was prepared, he ignited them abruptly. Flames shot up, and thick smoke billowed filling the air with a foul stench. The cacophony of howling foxes shook the heavens and the earth. After a while, the fire was extinguished. Upon inspection, the garden was filled with burnt foxes, countless in number, their bodies charred and lifeless. As Li Sheng was examining the scene, the old man entered with a mournful expression. Reproaching Li Sheng, I had no grudge against you from the past, nor any recent animosity. I rented your neglected garden and paid a hundred tails of silver as rent, which was a fair deal. How could you bear to burn my entire family? This profound enmity demands retribution. With these words, he left in indignation. Fearing their retaliation, Li Sheng reinforced his defenses, yet for more than a year, there was no activity. In the early years of the Shunzi reign, a group of bandits emerged in the mountains, amassing over 10,000 members. The official army could not eliminate them. Li Sheng's family's wealth and large numbers made him worry daily, fearing that the bandits might descend and plunder. At this time, a fortune teller came to the village, calling himself Old Man of the South Mountain. He accurately predicted people's life and death, fortunes and misfortunes, gaining widespread fame. Li Sheng invited him to his house for a divination. The fortune teller showed great respect as soon as he entered exclaiming, you are truly a real monarch. Li Sheng was astonished, thinking this was nonsense. However, the fortune teller continued to insist earnestly. While Li Sheng remained skeptical, he treated the fortune teller with respect and seated him. The fortune teller even claimed to be the sleeping dragon. He proposed preparing thousands of sets of armor and thousands of bows and arrows. Li Sheng was concerned about attracting enough men, but the fortune teller said, I'm willing to unite the mountain people for you, establish an alliance, and promote you as the true dragon emperor. The mountain leaders and soldiers will surely respond. Li Sheng was elated and allowed the fortune teller to proceed with the plan. He used all his hidden silver to create armor, buy bows and arrows, and prepare for the uprising. After a few days, the fortune teller reported, with your highness's favor and authority. Along with my eloquence, no mountain leader would be unwilling to follow your command. Indeed, within 10 days, thousands of soldiers and horses pledged allegiance. Li Sheng then appointed the fortune teller as his military strategist, raised a large banner, hoisted colorful flags, 
occupied mountaintops, built encampments, and rapidly gained momentum. County officials led troops to suppress them, but the fortune teller led the soldiers to a victory. The county officials were afraid and reported to the governor of Yanzhou. The governor gathered forces from six directions, numbering several thousand elite troops, and surrounded the Nines Hills King. The valleys resounded with cries and horse neighs. The Nines Hills King was greatly alarmed and summoned the fortune teller to discuss countermeasures. But the fortune teller was nowhere to be found. The Nines Hills King was at a loss. Climbing to the mountaintop, he looked out and sighed, Today, I finally realized the vast power of the imperial court. Shortly thereafter, the official troops breached the mountain fortress, capturing Li Shang. His wife, children, and family were all killed. Only then did he understand that the fortune teller was the old fox from years ago. Seeking vengeance for the extinction of his family by annihilating Li Shang's entire family. Alright, this story has come to an end. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.